to the to the second from last week from Christmas. So mm-hmm. uh, I had two D de- two mobilizations in one week, and then I had someone call me and get really very upset about their mobilization and start like yelling at me. So Jesus. Uh, took a lot for me to contain myself yesterday. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So persevered, and I did a demo or I did a mobilization today, but. Uh, the service provider that we're using for the internet for that job site trailer was late yep. and they decided to take all day to give us internet as well and we don't even have the correct speed. So mm-hmm. I didn't leave the job site till 545. So Damn. Gotcha. Yeah, and it's and it's way out in Allen, Texas. So Ooh, that, so that's <laughs> why you wanted to you needed to start late <laughs> yeah. later today. I Got knew something it. was going to go wrong today, so I was yeah. like seven thirty. Just were just anticipating it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, well, damn, dude. Well, hopefully it quiets down at least next week or the. You know, no, I gotta go to week, Waco at least next week, man. Okay. <laughs> what about Christmas week? You gonna get at least Christmas week to chill out? Yeah, I get Christmas week to chill out. I'm not answering anything on Christmas week. Yeah, I'm turning my phone off. I wanted yeah, to go no. out and do something on New Year's, but I think I might. I might think of it's my wife to stay inside. Yeah, I mean, uh, fuck, we hosted this. That was that was this year, right? Um, that was I, last year, or yeah, this year last. Yeah, year. this year, you know, we hosted on New Year's Eve last year, mm-hmm. and um, I don't think we're doing anything like that this year. So, um, probably just gonna chill. You know, like Christmas week and New Year's week for me at at my job, it's like it's kind of like uh, project week. You know, it's like work work on yeah. things that my team cares about because, <laughs> you know, tickets should be like a little slower and shit like that. So, um, but damn, man. Yeah. Nah, hopefully things uh, quiet down a little. But, um, well, uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to the Players Take episode 250. I'm your host, Justin DeSimone, joined as always by my co-host, Montreal Rice. And Montreal, first thing I wanted to say, 250 episodes. <laughs> Yeah, no, I wish I could be more excited. I'm just tired today, man. But no, I, like, I mean, like, like if we've proven anything, right, over the last five years, is that we're dedicated, you know? Yes. We may not be good at this, but we're dedicated to it. <laughs> I just <laughs> like talking sure. about video games, man. That's Ooh, it. Absolutely. You know? You know? Yeah. Hey, no, I mean, I think that's, the that's like, the reality for us. Is this is just how we hang out at this point, you know? It's, like, <laughs> it's kind of what it is, you know? Um, cause you know, when we're playing disco games in the discord, like there's very little window in there to actually like talk like this. Yeah, um, I know yeah. as weird as that probably sounds to people, but it's like, we're, we're fucking, we're focused on the game, you know, when we're, when we're <laughs> gaming. So, uh, so yeah. Um, well, um, Montreal, let's, uh, let me do the rigmarole and we can get into, we can just get right into it. I think this week. So. Uh, for those of you who haven't listened before, this is our weekly show. Where we talk about video games, video game news, and other topics pertaining to video games. We post at 6 a.m. Central Time on Fridays on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and your favorite podcast app of choice. And if you'd like to send us a question, you can do so on Twitter at the Players Take, or you can send us an email to theplayerstake01 at gmail.com. And I need to I need to point out, so I uh <laughs> I called people out last week about, you know, not sending any questions in recently. And uh, that dude sent a message to the Twitter. And he was like, hey, hey, uh, yo, I did send a question and y'all didn't read it. So I'm going to go find that right now because uh, okay. he is correct. Um, I, I, I did go look and there was a question we missed from a few weeks back. So I'm going to go find that one. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, my Charles, so let's. uh uh, let's get into. Let's just get right into what we've been playing. Um, do you want to start us off this week? Uh, yeah. So I haven't really been playing too much because of work. <laughs> um, so I played a couple of games of League of Legends, which it was all right. Um, I'm getting the really, I'm getting the hang of Way or Huey. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's a really cool champion. Uh, I actually like how complicated he is, but it's not. It's like in the easy way he's complicated. Um. I don't know. I just like him. I think he's really cool to play. Um, yeah. I usually don't play mage champions like that um, at all, but I don't know. Something about him was just really cool. Um, <clears throat> and I've been playing Devil May Cry. I'm in Legendary Dark Knight mode now with all three, all four characters, including Virgil. Um, mm-hmm. And then after that mode, I'll be playing Dante Must Die mode, which is the mode you can't get hit. 
Mm. <sighs> so that's, that's gonna be yeah. <laughs> uh, I all three care well. Virgil, Nero, and and Virgil or and Dante, I have no issues with. I don't think I'll have an issue with them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's V who is a terrible fucking character. I don't like him at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, not his his character or personality or his design. I I think his gameplay is just fucking ass. Um, it's very slow. It's not. It it just goes to the very antithesis or of what Devil May Cry is. I think I use that word right. It uh to what Devil May Cry is, and mm-hmm. I don't like it, uh at all. Um, so yeah, I I don't think he has enough moves to get away from stuff. Uh, mm. his damage output is not enough or. It's, it's it's a weird thing for me, so I I don't know, uh, because enemies have a lot of HP and higher difficulties, mm-hmm. um, so they're harder to kill. So I don't know, man. Um, yeah, that's just my thoughts on that. And I finished Titan Attack on Titan yesterday, and I remember go. last <laughs> I remember last week I said uh something about it being fascist, and I actually want to say that's wrong. I think the show. It's very anti-fascist. It's a lot of stuff that people say. It, it It's a lot of stuff that it's not that people say it is. Uh, one of it is being anti-fascist. Uh, it shows the sides. It shows like four different, four or five different perspectives on things on why things are the way they are and why people act the way they act. And even like Aaron's motivations, like the other side starts to understand. It's, it's just, it's the creator did a really good job on the anime that I mm-hmm. think wasn't displayed well in the manga. This is the first time, this is one like the one of the rare times I say the anime is a thousand times better than the manga. Uh because they really um stretch out some things that need to be stretched out. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially towards the end. It was a lot of context missing and they added you can tell that he went to the team and he added a lot of context to yeah, the last chapters of the of the manga, uh, into the last chapters of the of the show, and uh, yeah, it made me like, I, I I'm indifferent towards Aaron, um, but I don't I don't hate him like I used to, um, but I actually like the supporting cast a hell of a lot more. I think mm-hmm. the supporting cast of Attack on Titan is the the main character. I think that's what the mm. the creator was actually trying to convey. Yeah, um, yeah, um, I'm uh I'm I got the episode. I think I'm on episode 14 of season four right now, so mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't have a ton left to watch to rewatch. So I'm probably gonna I'm gonna try to finish that this week, and then uh, we can talk about that next week more in depth. Okay. Um, but I will say, in terms of your comment about the anime being better than the manga, I you know it's kind of a weird thing. I I I feel like in general, a well made anime is almost going to be inherently better than its manga just by nature of the the motion. You know. Yeah. Um. Uh. You know animating scenes like action sequences and stuff like that which oftentimes i feel like can are really difficult to keep track of in, in manga manga form a lot of the time like um i remember like for instance i'll say like i agree with you with the attack on titan I'm, I'm gonna bring up naruto real quick like it's one that's one where i feel like the manga and the anime are probably more on par uh it's kind of yeah. hard to say that the one's better than the other I, i'd almost lean manga in that case uh just because the anime is so bloated <laughs> <laughs> yes um, i the, agree yeah. and the animation is all over the place throughout the life of the series that it's like it's kind of hard there, there are sections of the anime that are way better than the manga you know like mm-hmm. to me just because they're like excellent they're really excellent episodes you know but yeah. um those are like really few and far between so if you're taking it overall i feel like the manga probably uh conveys the story better than the anime does for sure um, yeah, and I I feel that way about Baruto as well, because um, mm. I've been reading that, and the anime or the the manga is vastly superior than the mm. show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I can't understand for the life of me why they can't get the show to where the manga is. It's because they and, stretch it, dude. Like they turn yeah. it into a fifty two week show, yeah. you know, and it's like. It's, you know, if you want it to be good, it, it kind of has to be more like Attack on Titan, where you 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 stick to the source material and you expand on it a little bit here and there in certain ways, but like you don't 
you don't promise that you're going to keep releasing shit constantly the way the way a show like that does like Mm -hmm. i just i feel like attack on titan as much as it took 10 years for four seasons which is ridiculous you know it is ridiculous to a certain degree um but it don't it ended up resulting in a much better show for us overall um because the animation for the most part is of excellent quality uh there are definitely some periods where it's not as good but um there's just so many dude there's so many odm gear sequences in in the in the anime that are just unbelievable like the animation is so crazy dude like i i even early in the show's life i'm thinking when you know in episode five or yeah five where aaron like goes on his like you know he's like he's trying to go attack a titan or whatever after one of his squad mates gets killed and that sequence where he's like fucking going through the buildings bro and like just swinging around through those buildings crazy animation dude it's it's like unlike shit i've ever seen in a show you know um so it, it's it's some nutty stuff and obviously there's some there's some fights that are crazy with uh levi specifically multiple times yeah uh, parts with him specifically that are just unbelievable animation so um it's you know it's i, th- I think it's it's kind of a given give and take depending on what the studio wants and i just think borto is like it's just following the same legacy that naruto had you know where it's and trying just, it's trying to make too much content you know and it can't i just do don't it. think that should be the way now i think I I want something in between what Attack on Titan and Boruto is having. Like, you know, yeah. if I get two episodes every month, cool. Like, I'll be okay with that. As long as you're sticking to the source material and you're giving me what I want. I think that's what Boruto, Boruto needs to do. Um, I don't I don't know if Super did that. I mean, I think it was a good choice for Super Dish to end it where it, where it ended. But even the Super manga is like... To me, it's really good. I'm like, damn, yeah. like they really expanded on Goku's like, you know, it's a ultra instinct and everything of like that nature. But we're not going to see that animated. We we'll probably see it animated in a movie sometime soon. But like, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I just like I don't like the weekly formats for anime. I just like when, it's, you know, we get an episode Dude. or they just they just drop it, you know, for a yeah. season. And then, you know, yeah. they go on the highest it again and they, they're fucking animating, you know. Um, well, what you end up getting with the weekly format, especially when it's 52 weeks a year and there's never really a break, like an extended break, you they like the way they have to do it is they have multiple teams. Like, I mean, I'm talking like 12, 15 teams working on episodes constantly throughout the year. And um, some of those teams are worse than others. Like if you go look at Naruto, that's why it is so inconsistent is there's some of the teams are so bad, dude. And then some of the teams are really good, you know, and it's like. When you get you get you get a specific episode with one team and it's like, oh, this is fucking amazing. And then the next week it's like, you know, bad team. Um, it's just like it, it's it's frustrating because I, I think I think shows like Naruto deserve better personally. Um, uh, and even even Dragon Ball to a degree like Dragon Ball Z, like as much as I love it, um, I would love to see it reanimated <laughs> in more yes, modern yeah. stylings. Yep. Um, and just see what that looks like, dude. Because I mean, the fucking movies, bro. Like the Broly movie is fucking insane with the animation, dude. Like, uh, I remember when I saw that in theaters, I was just like, "What the fuck, dude? Like, this is crazy." Some of the shit they're doing now with these these fights, these fight sequences. So, um, yeah, it's just I don't know. It's interesting. Um, I mean, anime's yeah. tough, dude. It's it's a tough it's a tough field for sure. I I will say I think there's one anime that a lot of people for some reason don't like um but i think does a really good job balancing it is uh my hero i don't mm. think they ever had a bad episode as far as animation wise yeah um and they're and they're not weekly but they're not also every five years like attack on time i, I exaggerated but you know they they come out consistently with like you know yeah their seasons and they're uh, getting a little slower though i will say because yeah. uh the last season ended over a year ago and mm. the next one isn't starting, I think. I don't even know if it has a release date yet for when it's starting. Um, okay. So I, I will say you're right. That's probably the, that that has to be the happy medium. I think that's why that show is high quality most for the most part um, is because they're kind of taking their time with it. And also, I think this is the other thing. They don't have to worry about catching up. You know, it's like when they yeah. take a year and a half hiatus, you know, between seasons, they're giving the author you know, a year and a half to, to write more material. It's like, so it's, it's not as big of an issue here. Whereas with Naruto, they were going at a breakneck fucking pace, man. So, um, it was very apparent when Shippuden came out and the first couple arcs happened that they were, dude, they were, they were, 
they were going to catch up and like even sorry even before that at the end of the 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 first that's why there was 100 episodes of filler you know is because they kind of had caught up you know and they needed to take a, they needed to take a break but they couldn't they god forbid they just don't do the show for a couple of years you know um no we couldn't possibly do that um they they just made 100 episodes of filler and it's like some of the most dog shit stuff i've ever seen in in anime it's like but that's part of Naruto, you know. It's like some people don't even know that's filler. They think that's the show, you know. Um, and they probably wonder why. Like, why is this so weird? You know, it's like, um, but but yeah. Yeah. No, it's 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 funny if you follow like a filler guide, how many episodes you can skip. And it's actually it's like insane. half it's like half. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's, it's probably not that extreme, but it's no, it's a it's, lot. No, you you're right. It one season I was watching our original Naruto, and there was one season where I literally skipped, or one part where I skipped ten episodes, and then I just went straight to filler. And I was like, I I can't believe I watched ten episodes of fucking filler a week. Like, yeah. are you serious? I never watched any of them. I was I was fortunate where I, I came into the show uh, right when Shippuden started. Probably mm. I hadn't watched it until that had started. So. I already knew that there was a hundred episodes of filler going in. Um, so I, I kind of took it that way. And then when shipping and started doing um, filler arcs, uh, it was, I was like, I mean, I was deep in like the anime forums at this period in time, you know, like the, so people were always speculating is like, Oh, here we go, guys. We're into the filler arc. And then it'd be like, okay, well, I guess I'm not watching this show for three months. Um, you know, and that's, that's basically what I would do. Uh, I would just skip those entirely. There was there was a couple I actually did watch where they were decent ish, um, but you know they they're still not they still weren't good. You know it's like yeah. uh, it would just be frustrating though when they would be in the middle of an arc sometimes like a true canon arc and they would just throw like two episodes of filler in where it's like Uchiha flashbacks for two straight weeks that we've seen eighty thousand times already. They would just did that multiple times throughout the show and it was like. Dude, it's such a pace breaker, man. Um, yeah, watching they, that show week to week was miserable. They did the same thing like that Walking Dead used to do, mm -hmm. um, where they would do this thing in Walking Dead where I think it was at the Terminus, and the character, all the groups split up, and they will follow one group in their story arc for like one episode. Oh, yeah. And then they'll leave yeah. on a really good cliffhanger, and then they'll start the other group. And then they'll leave on a good cliffhanger and then they'll start another group and then they'll leave on a good cliffhanger and they would do that for about maybe two more arcs, like five episodes until it gets around to the first group's cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. And you're like, bro, what is this? <laughs> and yeah. Naruto started to do that as well. And I was just like, all right, man. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Especially doing a Ninja War arc. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> you're right, actually. The Ninja War arc is fucking... <laughs> <laughs> horrifying because there's a lot of fights in there that one is a that one that one is really sneaky because there's a yeah. lot of fights in there that are filler that people don't know are filler like mm -hmm. you would think they're not but they are they did not take place in the manga they were just off screen like they didn't happen um and there was a ton of fight there were tons of fights in that arc in the anime were were made up like the the they just embellished you know um big time and and you'd think they would be good, like it would be okay. You think they could get through that, but no, they can't. They can't write the dialogue, man. It's just like you know when uh, fucking uh, uh, Shikamaru and uh, Ino and um, oh my god, why am I? Fr oh god, I haven't watched Naruto for forever. Uh, Choji, uh, Choji, yeah, Choji and uh, Choji like are fighting Asuma. Like there's, yeah, there's filler in there. <laughs> there's 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 a lot of pontificating about you know him being. Uh, you know, if, oh god, this is so sad. Blah blah blah. It's just like it stretches it out for so fucking long, bro. And it's just like, oh my god. Um. So yeah, it's kind of tough. It's hard to watch yeah. it. It's hard to watch it without knowing that. I think you, yeah. you kind of have to go into it with that. But that, that's that's the thing where that's kind of what. Like, I just I wish I wish the in, I wish the industry wasn't so like constant. I guess like they can't afford to take a break. Some of these studios. So that's why that's why some of these shows they just they're they're fifty two weeks a year. They might take a couple weeks off where it's like fifty weeks, but still, that's crazy. That's that's a crazy production schedule for a, a show, you know, um, an yeah. animated show no less too. Um, so, all right. Um, you playing anything else you want to mention or no? Yeah, uh, no, that's it. 
<clears throat> okay. Um, so I've been uh, I've been playing more Star Ocean uh, myself. Star Ocean Second Story R. I am uh, I'm about I'm at eighty five percent now according to PS PlayStation. Um, uh, there's been uh, a lot of dungeons I've gotten through in the past week. Um, definitely made some progress, but uh, I'm hoping to be done with this soon. Um, but uh, I think I, I think I'm close to the end. I think I'm I'm thinking I'm a few hours away at this point, but uh, I'm still enjoying the game. Um, it uh, definitely it's kind of weird. I I think the thing is the problem with this game is I just don't the combat doesn't have a ton of depth, and it's starting to get really repetitive. Um, and I I can probably alleviate that myself by starting to play other characters, but I'm just I'm so deep in the game at this point that um, I don't really want to explore that i guess personally mm. um so i'm just trying to get through through to the end of it um but the the story's good um i i don't know unless something really crazy happens though in the end of the game which maybe it does um i don't think the story's as strong as everybody always raves about with this one um people tend to say that this one's the strongest story like period in star ocean and and while i'll say of the ones i've played it's certainly up there at the top um i still prefer three and i know people are going to call me crazy for that one like if you've played three there's this huge just controversial moment in three that a lot of people hate but i actually don't have a huge problem with myself Mm -hmm. um and i think the story overall in that game was better from um my memory of it personally so um so i i I don't know um game is good i think it's still definitely highly recommended for sure um but um you know, if you're if you're looking for something super super deep on a combat pers- from a combat perspective, um, I don't know if it's like this is really hitting that necessarily. But I don't think that's what they're going for. It's a kind of a retro game, so um, you know. But um, outside of that, uh, still playing League. Um, you know, playing this a little less, I guess, this week. Um, I'm kind of trying to back off a little bit. Uh, we were playing like every night for the last like three weeks. I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of taking a little bit of a break here. We kind of were getting things are starting to get heated in the discord um, again. And uh, you know, I don't, I don't want us to just like get all pissed off at each other for this game. So, um, but uh, still enjoying the game. Like, I don't think the game is the problem right now. <laughs> uh, it just yeah. feels like the way we're all playing it. Like it, I think we're we're all trying to achieve different things in our games and it's, it's not meshing super well. <laughs> so um but um i don't know i owe brad some dota games too so I, i'm i'm probably going to be playing that a little bit in the next week but um and then uh, outside of that attack on titan like we were talking about so um that's pretty much all i'm playing this week so uh Montreal, let's move into the news so we did, we got a few items this week uh we actually had one thing break literally right before we were starting recording um but uh first thing we'll get to is e3 uh, so E3 is officially dead. This was originally reported by Gene Park from the Washington Post. Um, and the ESA came out and confirmed it uh, shortly after this article was posted. Uh, but here's the quote uh, from the ESA. After more than two decades of hosting an event that has served as a central showcase for the U.S. and global video game industry. uh, uh Sorry, this quote is uh, broken up weirdly. Uh, Yeah, here we go. Uh, We know the entire industry, players, creators alike, have a lot of passion for E3. We share that passion. We know it's difficult to say goodbye to such a beloved event, but it's the right thing to do given the new opportunities our industry has to reach, fans and partners. End quote. So Montreal E3 is dead. Um, How do you feel about that? Uh, Indifferent? I was kind of looking forward to it coming back, but now all we have is the game awards and like maybe some other smaller awards. Yeah. But they would have had to change a lot of stuff. I don't think they were willing to change a lot of stuff or maybe companies really, really, really um, were willing to come back. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that was probably one of the biggest ones. I just don't think companies. they wanted to pay. Yeah. That was always the problem. It just started to cost them too much money for what they were getting out of it. Yeah. So, I mean, it sucks, but it took COVID to bring them down. Yeah, they were already on their way down before COVID, though. Yeah. I feel like this was inevitable. I think COVID just accelerated it. 
Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's just it's just it's just sad for me because there's just something really nostalgic about the whole con- all the conferences. You know, uh, each kind of each company doing their own conference, being on stage, this giant kind of like official thing. It kind of I don't know. It just it gave video games this gravitas that I feel like the game awards doesn't match. You know. Um, yeah, and, it was just you know. getting toxic though. At the end, you know, people were. I mean, if you think about it, how many fake, you know, trailers we had. People had to get ready by E3 and everything of that nature. Leaks. Yeah, leaks and everything. And I mean, as, as fun as it was, it was becoming a very toxic environment for both sides. I think for the viewer, for the audience, or the fans, and for the uh, the developers themselves. So it was kind of a, like a this needs to be taken out back and shot, but we're all mm-hmm. going to be sad about it going, you know, and yeah. that's kind of what happened. Yeah, and I mean, uh, there were our signs of this for years. Obviously, Nintendo pulling out mm-hmm. um, a while ago and kind of doing their Nintendo Direct thing, and then even Sony pulled out. Um, I think 2019 they weren't there um, before COVID, so. Uh, th- this was already happening. It just COVID made it <laughs> made it easier for companies to justify not going at all. Um, so it's uh it's a bummer, but um it was it was gonna happen at some point. It just kind of makes me wonder though with the ESA, like what is their because th- this was a huge amount of their revenue. It was like fifty percent of their revenue was from E three. Um, so and the other fifty percent is mostly made up of membership uh donations or membership fees for uh companies in in the gaming industry so so yeah um that'll be interesting but uh we did get a question about this montreal so i was i was looking for dad dude's question and uh, sage sent us a couple questions as well one of them was about e3 so uh here's this question now that e3 is officially gone what are your favorite moments from the conference anything coming to mind i have a couple in mind uh so i'll say the uh you know my favorite one of my favorites was uh i think this was final fantasy 13 i want to tell you they were I, I've, I don't remember what year this was but this was during the ps3 era where uh this guy from square enix was like talking about combat and he said you know the giant enemy crab meme or whatever i like mm. i remember that one um and then with playstation the other one is uh the uh, ridge racer you know that that, <laughs> that old gem um trying to think of some other ones uh in terms of more serious moments that were memorable uh, i would actually say the 2015 conference uh that year was really good from sony specifically i really remember that conference that was the one where they announced horizon uh zero mm, dawn okay god of war uh the reboot uh and then also we got monster hunter worlds announcement from that conference as well um there was also the Final Fantasy VII remake. I think was announced at that conference. No. Also, yes, I can't yeah. be. Twenty fifteen. No, yes, it was all in one conference. It was. It had to be twenty sixteen because I, I was in was Texas. I think it was. I was in Texas when Monster Hunter World got announced. I th- ah, dude, I think it was. Maybe I'm maybe I'm conflating those two years because I do remember the next year being really strong too. Um, but. I'm gonna go look. Or so maybe, you, maybe you, they did. Maybe they did a no. They did a. They did like a, almost a gameplay reveal. It was like he was swinging through the forest in Monster Hunter World. And yeah, I was running back and forth from my room to the front, and I was up here in Texas. I had to be 2016. Had to. Well, be. no. So 2015. All right. So Last Guardian was re-revealed that okay. it was still alive. That was a big deal. You remember at the time? Yeah. Uh, Gorilla debuted uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. That was huge. Um, Hitman. Street Fighter Five, uh, Media Molecule announced Dreams. I think, yeah, <laughs> yikes. Uh, that that's a yikes. Um, let's see, Final Fantasy VII remake. Yeah, um, what? yep, that was announced here. And then I think they ended with God of War. Okay, so most of her had to be next year. It had to be yes. twenty sixteen. That was like my favorite year because when Monster Hunter World was announced, I was going. Oh no! Shit. Okay. I did conflate this. So yeah, 2015 ended with an Uncharted 4 demo. That was when they showed the game uh, very deeply. Uh, okay. The, I think it was for the first time. Uh, the next year was God of War and Monster Hunter World. Yeah, yeah. That's what so I remember. Those now. two years, these two years together for Sony were like the strongest E3s they, I think they ever had. Yeah, they were peak around that time. Yeah. Uh, 
You know what? I, I I don't think it was E3 that I remember. I just remember E3 moments. Because you remember, or E3 season, rather. Because you remember that's when the Xbox announced, like, you know, they had their own little conference before E3, and they announced the, mm-hmm. in 2013 or 2012, maybe, they showed Xbox One. Mm. And I remember everyone, I remember I was watching the conference, and, you know, the sports, sports, Call of Duty sports meme came out around that time as well. <laughs> it was a, yeah. it was a fucking terrible time. Oh, you know what? It was during E3. I don't know if that was 2015 or 2016, but my favorite E3 moment was when they said, here, this is how you can trade or share games with your, your friends. Oh, yeah. And they yeah. handed the disc to somebody else. He was like, <laughs> That's how you do it. That and was everybody pretty, went that shit. Was everybody epic. went ape shit. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty epic. That was, that yeah, was they were moment. fucking shitting on Xbox, bro. And they never recovered from oh, that. Oh, PlayStation was peak, man, at that <laughs> point. Like, 2013. Like, I'd say from like 2010 to like 2017, I feel like PlayStation was firing on all cylinders. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, yeah, but. Um, I think it's some other moments. Um, there's always the Ubisoft ones and the uh, EA where there would be the the weird mascots that they would bring out. In, in Ubisoft's case, it was like the I don't remember. It was like the brand. It was like the wasn't it like a Doritos guy or something one year? Or, Bro, Ubisoft yeah. always brought out dancers. And then the dancers, year. they would do the <laughs> dancing number every time, every conference. And then EA would always be like, they'd bring out like, you know, some legendary soccer player to like talk about FIFA yeah. or <laughs> whatever. It was always so weird. Uh, so, you know, those are just, it's just fun stuff. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't necessarily think like we need that shit, but it is fun to think about that stuff in a nostalgic sense. Um, it's just like a, a different place in time, you know, for me that, uh, you know, obviously we're not going to really return to, um, in any real way. I just, I don't like the game awards doesn't, doesn't evoke that same it, it doesn't, it silliness, doesn't that. you know, it's, I don't know. Yeah. It's become a little bit more streamlined, uh, yeah. the game awards, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I used to like the quirkiness, and I used to like from E3, uh, especially if you're on YouTube, people would like play games that they didn't show mm-hmm. on the awards, and you know you yep. saw little side bits and stuff like that, oh, the yeah. games coming yeah. out and gameplay and shit like that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, and I, I was, think that's the, the sorry, just the, the what, like to jump off that point real quick, like. That was the thing about E3 that I really enjoyed was the games we didn't hear about at the conferences that would get announced and shown. Yeah. Uh, like it would do everybody, like almost every company would hold their announcements for E3. You know, it was like that was when you announce games and it was always just this big giant blowout. And, you know, admittedly, it wasn't healthy for the industry ultimately, but uh, it was just such an exciting moment for us in that point in the year where you just you hear about so many games, you know, that you it, it was crazy. Yeah, it it was a uh, it was it was pretty crazy. I don't know. I just remember like, especially when the three sixty was it the three sixty or the Xbox One, and the PS Four. When, when did Watch Dogs? When did Watch Dogs come out on? Was it the Xbox, Xbox One? Oh uh, yeah, I remember seeing the trailer for that, and we thought the next gen consoles were going to be yeah. legendary, and it turns out it was just. Oh. Oh my god the, yeah, the, dude man. yeah do you remember that era that br- that kind of few years where companies were showing games and making them look amazing and then they would come would come out and they didn't look anything like they should you know watchdogs being like prime ex- like one of the first examples of that yeah man, different times yeah i remember that shit um it's crazy how it still happens a little bit sometime this year uh, oh it definitely does it, it most definitely does but um you know, it's not as nearly as prevalent as it was back then, though. They were they were really taking advantage of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yep. But all right, well, E three is dead, guys. Um, you know, well, I mean, we have you know, we have more stuff throughout the year, which I think is probably better overall. Um, for yeah, us I think it's healthier for the companies themselves. So yeah, I think it's a lot healthier, and they can release stuff when they're ready and shit like that. So. Right, and they don't need to make vertical slices or any of that shit that they yeah. used to do. So yeah. All right, Macho, let's move on uh, to another bummer. Um, so we've been kind of talking about this game on and off for a while, but uh, Naughty Dog, uh, this is the thing that broke right before the show, literally like you know an hour ago, <laughs> posted a blog post uh, on their 
on the Naughty Dog website of all places, not on PlayStation Blog. Um, but they uh, they are canceling The Last of Us Online, which is, which is what they're calling it. Um, you know what we would call The Last of Us Factions. Um, so here's the here's the blog post. So quote. Uh, we realize many of you have been anticipating news around the project that we've been calling The Last of Us Online. There's no easy way to say this. We've made the incredibly difficult decision to stop development on that game. Um, we know this news will be tough for many, especially the, our dedicated Last of Us faction community who have been following our multiplayer ambitions ardently. We're equally crushed at the studio as we look, we we're looking forward to putting it in your hands. We wanted to share with you some background of how we came to this decision. The multiplayer team has been in pre-production with this game since we were working on The Last of Us Part 2, crafting an experience we felt was unique and had tremendous poten potential. As the multiplayer team iterated on their concept of the la for The Last of Us Online during this time, their vision crystallized. The gameplay got more refined and satisfying, and we were enthusiastic about the direction in which we were heading. In ramping up to full production, the massive scope of our ambition became clear to release and support The Last of Us Online we'd have to put all our studio resources behind supporting post-launch content for years to come, severely impacting development on future single-player games. So we had two paths in front of us, become a solely live service game studio or continue to focus on single-player narrative games that have defined Naughty Dog's heritage. We are immensely proud of everyone at the studio that touched this project. The learnings and investments in technology from this game will carry into how we develop our projects and will be invaluable in the direction we are headed as a studio. We have more than one ambitious, brand new single player game that we're working on here at Naughty Dog. We cannot wait to share more about what's what come ne comes next when we're ready. End quote. So, Montreal, that's that's it. Last of Us Factions is dead. Yep. Uh, I I don't know what to take from this i i, I do and i don't want to jump to conclusions um i mean we're going to speculate it, yeah it was just one line <laughs> that got to me where they said uh -huh. they had to continue to support it after it came yes. online they had the two um, sort they had the two choices become yeah. a live service studio or continue to focus on single player games and yeah i think there's a lot of bullshit in that sentence um i think they're protecting sony they're protecting themselves and i think they're protecting bungie at the same time Mm -hmm. um all in one sentence here and mm -hmm. obviously there's some things we don't know right um we don't know what the state of the game was in when bungie took a look at it right um and that that's what they're saying in rampant and full production the scope became clear and to release and support this game they'd have to put all their studio resources uh into post-launch content but when did they come to that realization? Was it before Bungie looked at it after Bungie looked at it, you know? Um, and either way, um, I disagree with what they're saying here that they could not have released this game in some way and s maintain the studio as is in some way. Uh, cause there's, I mean, there's always options here, right? They, if, let's say this is true. They needed a studio as large as they are right now in order to, um, support this game post-launch okay so if it's lucrative enough lucrative enough couldn't you hire people ramp up and hire to actually support that is that not worthwhile to naughty dog or in sony um i guess they made the decision that it's not but um that was uh, that's not that's kind of thing number one to me but number two is um their, their idea that like they 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 had to they couldn't like it's weird that they didn't feel like they could uh, they could hire um but it's just i just think the the idea that the game needs post launch support is kind of the other thing that sticks out to me is like i don't necessarily agree with that like this is kind of my point a few weeks ago when we were talking about this is like like whatever they were making seemingly might have had a unique vision within the multiplayer space and mm -hmm. It feels like, and this 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 blog post has done nothing to change my mind on this. It feels like people that are part of whether this is Bungie or Sony themselves, I, who we don't know, right? But somebody came in, or people came in and said and, and kind of told them like, "Hey, this is how you do this." You know, like you need to have post launch support. You have to have a plan for post launch support. You know, and all that. And maybe they didn't have that. Maybe they had a more 
um, digestible experience that was kind of a game you played for a while and you put it down, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that in multiplayer games. And I just feel like the industry has gotten really obsessed with these, this idea of endless multiplayer games where they're games that you never put them down, you know, and it feels like everybody's trying to achieve that nowadays. And it's, I just don't think that's healthy for the industry. There's only so many players, man, you know, and, (laughs) and there's only so many players who want to play multiplayer games. And to be frank, like, I don't think most companies know how to make an experience that will keep you engaged as long as something like League of Legends or Dota would, you know, Um, or fuck even Fortnite, (laughs) you know, it's (laughs) like, like, these are games that work on a certain level that I just like, why are you trying to have Naughty Dog compete in that space? You know, it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, And and maybe they're updating Cadence. Maybe they felt like their update cadence needed to be a certain speed, you know, um, and they couldn't meet that without dedicating the entire studio. But I just I don't I don't know if players of this game would necessarily be looking for that, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So I, that's just what frustrates me about it. And the fact that we're going to get nothing, we're never getting a game. They're not releasing anything. That's basically I mean, that's what they're saying here. Uh, this game's got this, this game is done, you know um and and that just sucks because i i i I almost guarantee you there's something really good here that like we we a lot of people would have enjoyed but um it's not gonna happen so yeah i think what people really wanted was just original factions but like with the newer engine Mm -hmm. um yeah i think that's also the other thing that's frustrating right is they got into scope creep mode um because I think you're hundred percent correct. I think, I think a lot of people who loved factions from the original last of us kind of would have been okay with just a more enhanced version of that with more maps and weapons and, you know, maybe some additional modes and stuff. Like it didn't need to be this live service game <laughs> that it seemed to balloon into, you know? Yeah. Um, and that, that is a, probably another frustrating element, even for me. Cause I did like factions in, in the original last of us too, um, is, is like, you're not getting that either. Like we're not gonna get that, and and that that also sucks. So yeah, and 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 that's what I mean. Like I, I that's why I, I, I try not to speculate, but I think like the whole games as a service model is really just killing. It's even killing multiplayer games because people feel like they have to put some kind of monetization into it. I mean, you can put some kind of skins or whatever the fuck you know, whatever. Um, but like, just what happened to like the original way that we used to do it? Remember like map packs and shit like that? Like, I don't yeah. know, just do that for factions and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And if you don't buy it, you don't play it, but you can still play the original maps or whatever the case may mm-hmm. be. And I mean, maybe they don't want to gatekeep other people out like that, but it's just like, maybe factions had to be something like that. Maybe you had to go to the original form or back to form of like multiplayer. Like, I don't know. I just, it just sounds real like. It just sounds really we didn't we couldn't figure out how to monetize this so it shut down it was really fun though like we played it and we knew it was going to be fun for everybody but because bungie came in or because sony came in and say we can't really monetize this yes this is a really good game but we can't monetize it, it has to be shut down and I, I think that's ultimately what it was i don't i think the game was done they just couldn't figure out a way to monetize it and make it live servers you know so I mean, it sucks, but yeah, this is like, what it is. You're gonna put like I mean, I'm assuming they've been working on this for like five years, probably. Like you know, since the probably tail end of Last of Us, or even the mid section of the Last of Us Part Two, Part Two's development. This like split off on its own at some point, you know, during that, and it's like you. I mean, you got to have something pretty substantial by this point, right? And it's not enough that you could just put an additional six to 12 months of work into it and get it into a releasable state where it could be like a $60 game or something. I don't know. It's like, but maybe not. I mean, maybe they would need a campaign to justify that and they can't build a campaign that fast. So, um, and they might not have built one at all, which would make it difficult to justify the price tag. So, yeah, and I I agree with them. Maybe it would have turned them into like a, a a multiplayer studio or something like that, or a live service studio. But I feel like Sony has so many support teams that you know they could have got one of the support teams to do this while you're doing do that. Do the post launch you know? support, right? Yeah. Right. So I like I agree with you. Like that's not a really good excuse. 
like I, I don't know, man. It's it really sucks. Um I don't know. In all in all things, in the hindsight, since we've been covering news, we already know that Sony wanted a live service game and they can't get it now. You know, or they can't get the one they want. And then on top of that, like, I don't know, it's just been a year for live service stuff to die, even stuff that hasn't been released. So I don't right. know all the money. Right. We know hyenas got canceled from Sega. Like that was, you know, there was a heavy investment there. It's like yeah, and I, not to I mention like the eighteen or thirty fucking uh, live service games that did get canceled that were already released. Right. So, um, I don't know. I feel like this was a waste of money. Uh, I feel like it was if it was a standalone like multiplayer game or whatever the case may be. Like if I had to pay twenty bucks for it, I feel like a million people would have paid twenty bucks for it. And that would have been twenty million dollars, <laughs> and you would have had twenty million dollars back in your pocket or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I don't know. This is not. This is really dumb, in my opinion. I think it was dumb on everybody's side to let this game die. In my opinion, I just don't. I don't. I don't think it's. I. I think there's something. I think there's a conspiracy here. Um. I. I feel like there's a Jason Schreier article, you know, waiting in the wings in a in a year or two. That's gonna kind of hopefully like give us the truth here because i don't i feel like something happened like i I really think that bungee meeting was a real thing and i think it derailed the game like in a big way because um dude neil Druckmann has been teasing the fuck out of this game for a long ass time you know yeah uh and and like he he's been talking about how excited he is for people to see it he teased it as early as the beginning of this year you know talking about how we'd hear more about it this year so Something fucking happened <laughs> pretty recently that totally derailed this whole project, you know? Um, so I, I, I don't know. I just don't, I don't really buy it. Um, obviously they needed to say something when they were officially canceling it. This game is way too public for them to just throw it into a bin and not say shit about it. Um, but at the same time, it kind of makes me wonder, is this because Naughty Dog did this on their website, not on PlayStation blog. So that does kind of make me wonder, is there is there kind of a schism there a little bit <laughs> that maybe they went rogue and did this on their own? Like they didn't they didn't they just said, like, we're just going to we're sending this out, you know, and maybe Sony might not have wanted that, you know, because mo- most communication Ooh, yeah. I, like ninety nine percent of communication about first party stuff goes on PlayStation blog. It is not on the company's website, you know. No, that's that's actually a really good. Observation. So, I didn't think about that. Maybe they did go rogue. This is going to be interesting. I mean, maybe nothing comes out of it in the next couple of weeks, but hopefully we get some kind of article about it, like you said, because mm-hmm. I didn't even think about like them just going rogue and saying like we're canceling development. Fuck it, you know. I don't. I don't so. think they're doing that. I think the the announcement of it, you know, like maybe Sony said we're done, cancel the game, stop putting resources into it, and you know they're like, oh, do we want to say anything? And Sony's probably like, no, don't. You know, and then Naughty Dog is like, no, we can't do that to our fans. You know, people are looking forward to this shit, you know. Um, so I, I think it's more there. I don't think they canceled their own game necessarily, but, um, you know, I don't know. It could indicate some kind of infighting going on, though, that think that Naughty Dog might not be might not be happy right now. So um, but I don't know. Hopefully we get yeah. some more information about it at some point soon. Yeah, I, I agree. Hopefully. All right, Montreal. Let's move on to our final story, which is uh, Circana numbers from November 2023. Uh, they came out this month, so this is an interesting man. This was a bad month this year for uh, video games. So total video game sales for November 2023 were 5.867 billion this year versus 6.294 billion last year. That is a minus seven percent decrease. Um, and then video game content, uh, this is all game sales, DLC, microtransactions, subscriptions, etc. cetera. Uh, 4.6 billion this year versus 4.729 billion last year. That is a minus 3% decrease. And then hardware sales, 964 million this year versus 1.271 billion last year. That is a minus 24% decrease. And then video game accessories, 303 million this year versus 295 million last year. That is a 3% increase, in fact, but a big drop in spending uh, this year versus last year. Does that surprise you? Uh, No. Like I said, the you know, with certain things happening in the economy right now, especially in the US, uh, USA, mm-hmm. I kind of, oh, excuse me, 
kind of expected this, um, to be honest with you. And to me, uh, Black Friday just wasn't hitting uh, as far as it sales. It really wasn't, man. This man, year was, was bad, bro. It was bad. I, I, I was expecting to buy a lot of games. And I looked, and I was just like, I'm good. I, I don't want to buy anything. Dude, the only thing I bought was a monitor. That's it. <laughs> same. Actually, you know what? Yeah. Same. Yeah, that's yeah, the only man. thing I bought, too. Yeah. yeah. Which that actually showed uh, up today. Oh, really? I got mine, like, <laughs> next day or something like that. <laughs> Yo, dude, I you might you must... Was it the one I sent to the group chat? No, it was another one I sent. Oh, it's a that. different one. Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah, the, the one I sent was a seemingly a huge uh, seller. Uh, it was a 34 inch uh, LG monitor for 250, which is a really uh-huh. good deal. It's usually like 400 or 450, I think. And uh, dude, I think people were going crazy on it because I bought it and it was still available to purchase all through Black Friday and Cyber Monday. But dude, the second I bought it, it showed like delivery between December 9th and January 9th. Like they had clearly had no stock allocated for the sales they were making. Um, so yeah, it was kind of up in the air when I was going to get it, but uh, it. It uh, showed up today, so happy about that. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, year to date sales. Um, uh, so for total video game sales, uh, basically uh, forty nine point two eight three billion uh, this year versus f- basically forty nine billion uh, last year. Uh, one, it's only one percent difference now. Uh, same with uh, video game content. Uh, forty-two point two four billion versus forty one point nine billion uh, last year, which is one. About one percent higher, uh, negative one percent on video game hardware. Uh, four point nine eight nine billion this year versus five point zero five six billion last year. Uh, negative one percent decrease there, and then accessories only a one percent difference to two point zero five four billion this year versus two point zero two seven billion last year. So, I mean, we're looking at honestly sales year over year, like might end up flat depending on how December goes. So, um, kind of interesting. Um, I mean, we've been talking about this since COVID. Uh, the COVID bump was real for video games. And the uh, come down <laughs> has been very real at the same time. So uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on that, certainly. But, uh, okay, top 20 games in the U.S. for the month of November. Number one, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Number two, Marvel Spider-Man 2. Number three, Hogwarts Legacy. Number four, Madden NFL 24. Number five, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Number six, EA Sports FC 24. Number seven, Super Mario RPG. Number eight, Mortal Kombat 1. Number nine, NBA 2K 24. Number 10, UFC 5. Number 11, Assassin's Creed Mirage. 12, Naruto x Boruto. Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections. (laughs) Number 13, Sonic Superstars. 14, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, 15, God of War Ragnarok, 16, NHL 24, 17, Star Ocean, the second story, R, wow, 18, Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales, uh, number 19, wow. Minecraft, number 20, Just Dance, 2024 edition. Uh, anything jumping out to you there? Literally I can't believe Call of Duty uh, sold that much. I thought that was going to be, this was going to be the worst Call of Duty to sell. I mean, um, dude... It doesn't matter how bad it is. They always are the number one selling game the month they come out. Like, yeah, has that true. ever not happened? I, I like, but this <laughs> one was especially egregious. Like, yeah. This one Which, was like really bad. We'll talk about that in the overall for the year because that is actually relevant to that conversation. But oh, uh, definitely didn't definitely expected it to be number one for the month, though. Um, um and then. <sighs> <sighs> fucking Naruto, bro. I. I Bro. <laughs> how many of them have their been? I hate you anime gamers. How many of like, them have there been? <laughs> I, bro, I think there's like six of them. 12, now. 10, 12. No, it's more than that, dude. No, there were, it has there, to were be. there were four ninja storms alone, you know? Like yeah, one through four, like numbered ones. One through four, and then there was connections. It was generations. Oh, no, this is, this is connect, generations, revolutions, yeah. or revolutionary or something like that. Yes. How many and, ninja storm games? Are there? <laughs> yeah, bro. I think there's like six or seven. I think seven. I'm giving it seven. Uh, let's see. Ultimate Ninja. These are the old ones. Yeah, those uh, are the old ones. The Storm ones. ones you gotta look for. Storm. Here we go. Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm. Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Two. Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Generations. Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Three. Full Burst. Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution, 
Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 4, Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Trilogy slash Legacy, uh, Naruto X Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connection. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games. Eight games? Yes. Over 15 years, interestingly. Yes, dude. Mm hmm. You okay? What are we doing? I, I don't love know. I don't, I, I don't know. I love Naruto, y'all. Who's buying these games? <laughs> like, I don't know. Oh, my God. Bro. I don't know, man. And then it spawned off the shitty anime arena fighter genre that everyone does. It's so annoying. When Juju Kaisen got his game, I was like, oh my god, this game looks Dude, fucking Dude, really? No, they did one of those too. Isn't there like a... Oh, you haven't there... seen it? No. It's fucking terrible. Oh, it's... no. It... Bro, oh, no. Maki's in the air when she's doing her air combo. She doesn't yeah. even have an animation for air. Oh, she's like standing god. in the air. <laughs> oh my god. Wasn't there like a Demon Hunter one too of these? Yeah, Demon Slayer. But that one was Demon actually Slayer, of quality. Yeah. It was actually of quality, but still the same shit. Who are buying these games, man? I know who's buying. I look at the comments every time I see these games get like released, and people are just like, oh, I can't fucking wait, bro. Well, dude, is oh this the God. same degenerate shit we were talking about uh, fucking Kingdom Hearts Missing Link? Dude, like the, the level of ravenous, drooling fans underneath that that like announcement video, it's like, like who? Like, <laughs> oh, no, they're egregious. <laughs> Like I, I, this is I, the game you're un, you're this excited about? Like you're more excited about this than you were Kingdom Hearts three. Like I don't I don't tweet about them because they're low key the most oh ravenous fan God. base ever. But yeah. Kingdom Hearts fans and Final Fantasy fans mm-hmm. are fucking psychopaths. Like I don't know if you know what Bay tw- uh, Beyonce Hive is on Twitter or like the uh, Nicki yeah. Minaj Hive. I think they're low key those <laughs> type of people. They will find you they're just thralls. Yeah. And they, and they they will destroy you. I've seen people get hyped over like the Final Fantasy symf- uh, like symphony games and stuff like that. And I love like you know music and shit like that. But it's just like, bro, they have a, like a, a disillusion to like like the city and all this other shit like that. And I'm just like, NT wasn't mm-hmm. good. The city NT was like, oh, it, it it was just underrated, bro. No, it wasn't. It was bad. I'm sorry, y'all. It was a bad game. It was a bad game. Mm-hmm. And, and they just. And I feel like Naruto fans, or not Naruto fans, but anime gamers, just like they made they made the the fucking My Hero game like this. They made the fucking One Punch game like this. They made the fucking Juju Kaisen game. I mean, like Dragon this. Ball games are like this. I mean, that's Think where this that, all spawned from. I was about to say Tenkaichi spawned it's Tenkaichi, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, uh, um, yeah. And then you know, I can't even get hyped for it because I'm like, huh. 15 years it, of this, like, yeah, what is there to be excited about anymore, you know? Yeah, people were so hyped for, like, Tenkaichi 4, and I was just like, or whatever it's called, Sparking Rage or Rage Sparking, sparking. Yeah, 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 I don't, whatever. I was just like, oh, I'm I'm glad to play against the same arc Bro, of Frieza. Give me, give me Budokai 4, I'll actually be excited. You know, like yeah, yeah. I see the same Because at this thing. point, I, at this point, that would be it. that would be original. You know, that would be a lot more original than another fucking Tenkaichi bullshit Xenoverse fucking game. Yeah, man. I just I, I can't anymore, Justin. I can't, bro. No, it's I'm to the like point. It. It's to the point where I I literally muted Ninja Ultimate Ninja Storm. Dude, I don't want to see them on my just, timeline just, anymore. Just mute Naruto and Boruto. Like you might as well just do that. Yeah, I buy it. The, the fans. Are you getting any quality qu- content out of those two names? Like, come on. No, I'm not. You're I'm getting not. people. You, you're probably getting, you know, like videos of this game, or you're getting people arguing about Sasuke's power scaling in Shippuden. You know, like, Actually, do you really want it. that on your timeline? I'm getting disillusioned Baruto fans who think Baruto is just the shit and is better than uh-huh. every anime out. They still think Naruto is the big three or whatever the fuck. And I'm like, no, it's not. Man. It's Just because One Piece is still going on doesn't mean the big three still exists, you know? Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, there is no big three anymore. Dude, I, it was I think Bleach, that... Naruto, and One Piece. Yeah. The, two of those have been gone for a long time. Well, you know? Bleach actually came back. They did the th- yeah. They're did they doing like the Thousand Year War arc or something. I don't know. 
Oh, I don't great. follow Bleach like that. Great. So. so did they like revive every villain that's been in the entire series and <laughs> have a giant war with those I characters? I don't, I don't know that arc. I don't, I don't know Bleach. Okay. I don't know. Bleach never appealed to me. So me either. But you know, yeah. I hope I hope I hope nobody got revived because Naruto already did that, guys. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's you, uh, you know you know when I was reading the manga, right? And that the 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 arc that arc was being led into. I remember I remember when when I kind of realized what what was happening, like when uh, Kabuto revealed his Edo Tensei, you know, army or whatever. Uh how hyped, you know, you kind of were at first, but then as you like get into it, you're like like when you get into the first like where the war actually starts and then the squads start fighting the Edo Tenseis uh you know characters and you're like oh this is what this is gonna be rehashing fights that we've already seen you know and you're gonna get to see some characters that we haven't seen before like some of the kages and stuff which were, were kind of cool to, to see yeah but, that was that was cool you yeah. know but dude like watching kakashi like fight zabuza and uh fucking haku again and it's like okay like, this is literally the first arc of these series. Like, what are we doing here? You know, it's like. And, and then they try to give him an excuse. Boy, I actually powered them up. And I'm like, I, you know what? You know what I hated about that whole arc? Yeah. Kabuto. I never liked that character. I thought his power scaling was bullshit. I yep. didn't think he was that smart. I, everything about him to me came out of nowhere. And I was just like, I yeah. why is he on why is he on Amichi Maru's level as far as reviving people yeah. and stuff? I think it, in 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 retrospect, you're totally correct, man. Like I I liked Kabuto in the moment of the series, like of of like being contemporary to it, and I still like the character to some degree. Um, I like his. I don't like what Kishimoto did with him. Ultimately. Yes. Yeah. I cuz there was a period where he showed up randomly and like talked to Naruto for like 5 seconds and and he was like, "Hey, I'm getting more powerful. I'm going to show back up at some point, you know." And Naruto was like, "What the fuck?" you know? And then he just disappears, you know, and he's gone until the war arc basically. Um and he comes back and he's like a fucking he's like half snake man and he's got the fucking snake Yeah, and shit. It, it was and it was just so weird, man. But the character himself didn't really get to shine in the war arc, you know? It was like he got so wrapped up in this Edo Tensei nonsense, whereas, like, Kabuto had a fight, and it was it was lame. Like, it wasn't, like, a cool fight. I Like, I don't know. Maybe people would disagree with me, but that fight against with him versus Itachi and Sasuke was just not that interesting of a fight. I um, actually forgot about that fight. It never now. even felt like he had a real shot at winning, you know? And he's a villain. He's supposed to be one of, like, the primary villains of the arc. You know, um, but he's going up against two fucking Uchiha's that are like uber powered. Like there was no shot he was ever going to win that fight. And it was kind of lame because his connection to Naruto was what was important to that character. You know, he always was the one like taunting Naruto early on. And uh, even when he was chasing Sasuke and shit, like it was, you know, it was it was I felt like it was always Kabuto who was the one there talking shit. You know, it yeah. wasn't Orochimaru. It was it was Kabuto. And, and it was like. For him to end that way fighting Uchiha has made no sense to me. It's like what like he should have fought Naruto and there should have been like a really kind of emotional fight there that should have happened. But the way the story went down, it's like, no, Naruto has to fight Obito. Like that's very important. That has to happen. So he can't fight Kabuto, you know? It's like though so, I don't know. I just think I think his story went the wrong direction. It kind of veered into this ridiculous fucking nonsense that <laughs> Blow just the last arc of the story, so I just don't think Kishimoto knew what to do with everybody. Um, there were too many characters, yeah. Yeah, he had a very dense world. Um, I think he took he should have took his stuff slower. He should have took the Oda path with One Piece, to be honest with you, and kind of stretched a lot of shit out. Um, yeah. but he, I, I think he just wanted to get Naruto over with, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like it's his it's his work of art, but a lot of stuff suffered in the end. Yeah, Definitely. that's all. That's what we got. Fifteen uh, right. fucking Ninja Storm games, though. Yes, we just went on a fucking side. Yeah, we digress on uh, on on Naruto like that. Uh, but yeah, we don't need uh, any more of these fucking games at this point. Um, but I'm sure there's millions of people who disagree with us. Uh, <laughs> other stuff jumping out in your list. Uh, Super Mario RPG uh, being seven is kind of crazy, man. Nintendo 
is nutty, man. Yeah, uh, I, I, it's a fucking remake. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I thought this was gonna be a lot higher to be honest with you, but to be number seven anyway is still pretty good, uh, you know. So, well, it gives me hope that um they might revisit this, you know, with like a new game. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what they did it. I was see love that. Had, see if it could spark some interest in the game and um you know get it out, and yeah. get a new one out. I would love that personally. So. That's kind of my hope. Um, other than that, um, Hogwarts Legacy jumping back up. I think that's because the game released on Switch mm. in November. Okay. Um, and apparently it's been doing very well on that platform. Um, Star Ocean being at 17 is uh, the fact that it charted at all is actually really, really impressive. So no, a also lot of giving talk me about hope. that game, man. Yeah, yeah. It's also giving me hope that Star Ocean might get a new entry and get like a real budget for once. Um, yes. <laughs> and, uh, that would be nice uh, so we can actually get like a solid entry that isn't just like a, you know, a double A title. Um, so, um, all right. Uh, top 24 of the year. Um, so Hogwarts Legacy, number one, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, number two. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom, number three. Spider-Man right. 2, number four. Madden NFL 24 at five. Diablo 4 at six. Uh, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2 at seven. Star Wars Jedi Survivor at eight. Mortal Kombat 1 at nine. Starfield at 10. Uh, Resident Evil 3 at 11, uh, EA Sports FC 24 at 12, and will be the show 23 at 13, Dead Island 2 at 14, Super Mario Bros. Wonder at 15, uh, 16 is Final Fantasy 16, uh, Street Fighter 6 is 17, FIFA 23 is 18, Elden Ring is 19, Remnant 2 is 20. Um, so just at the very top here, Hogwarts Legacy holding strong at number one. There is a chance that it will end the year at number one, depending on how December goes. And uh, to be quite honest with you, uh, that has not happened in 15 years where co- either Call of Duty or a Rockstar game were not at the top of the uh, number one spot on the, the yearly selling chart. For and that's a single BD. player game. Yeah. And it's beating Call of Duty. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. Uh, this game is very powerful for reasons that kind of mystify me. Um, yeah, <laughs> because it's not that good of a game, you know, um, to deserve this level of of sales, I guess. I mean, more power to them. Congratulations to the team. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Avalanche, yeah. Bro. Like, like, yeah. no, they, like they made a good game. I'm not saying this is a bad video game, but uh, like but this is like bigger than Elden Ring was, you know, like obviously. And um, that is uh, crazy. And I obviously some of that I think is a response to the political uh, belly aching, I guess I'll say prior to the game coming out. Um, mm-hmm. But at this point, it's not that anymore. Like it can't really be that just that. Yeah, I, I forgot about all that, you know, right. So. At some point, the game's own merits are kind of carrying it. So this game is resonating with people in a way I was not expecting based on my experience with it. Um, but I'm also weird. I have weird tastes in what I want out of games. So, um, <laughs> um, it is a solid game if you're looking for uh kind of an action adventure game in a, in, in the Harry Potter world. So, um, so that's interesting. Uh, I think the other thing I want to call out though, is at the bottom of the list here. Um, Elden Ring, FIFA 23, we got Call of, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 at seven. Um, we've got, um, what else? What was the other one? Uh, I guess just those three games that didn't come out this year, staying at the top of the list. Um, man, guys, y'all gotta play some video games. You know, it's like well, it's so frustrating like to see this. It is. Well, we're gonna talk about this later because we have a topic coming up. Is like people need to expand their horizons, like in a very real way. Um, because it's nice that Remnant Two is at the is at twenty. Uh, but that game's probably fallen off the list by by the end of this month. Um, and then otherwise, I mean, it's just it's just the names we know. You know, there's nothing surprising on here in this top twenty list. Well, you know, it's weird. If you go to Avalanche Game site, mm-hmm. they don't have Harry Potter on their site as released games. There's another studio called Avalanche. Oh, is there two Avalanche Studios? I believe there is. Okay. 
You're you might yeah, you're looking at the other one. So you need this you need to look at the one that's uh tied to WB. Ah, okay. WB, right. WB Games Avalanche. Um it's uh Avalanche Software.com is their mm. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's another company called Avalanche. Um Oh, these guys made oh, Disney Infin- Infinity. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Avalanche Studios, um, I believe are the ones that make the Just Cause games. Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought that yes. was them the entire time. Nope. Different studios. Gotcha. All right. Um, oh, they made the tech games? I didn't know they made it. Okay. Yeah, it's funny. Um, yeah, so that that's a that's a easy one to mix up. But um but uh yeah. Um I don't know. I just wish we could see some more variety on this. Um, but unfortunately that is not how the industry works anymore. Or ever, really. Yeah. So all right, anything else jumping out to you here, Montreal? Mm, no, not really. Uh, actually, I do want to shout out to Mario. Jesus Christ, that brand IP is insane how it just came up. Uh, but yeah, uh, no, not really. No, nothing else besides that. All right, fair enough. Um, okay, so I do have a topic for us following up on the Game Awards, right? I've uh, been seeing a lot of debate in the last week about whether Baldur's Gate 3 deserves Game yeah. of the Year or not. And a lot of that debate has been centered around comparing it to Spider-Man 2. And it's these, uh, I'll call them brain-dead, I don't know, monkey-brained arguments where they'll show this cutscene of, I'm sure many of you have seen this, where they're showing the cutscene early in the game where sandman throws spider-man through a fucking building and then he like catches himself and he slingshots himself back into the fight or whatever and (laughs) then they show gameplay actual gameplay of Baldur's gate yes and the back and forth on this has been so dumb on both ends it is ridiculously frustrating because the argument for the spider-man side right is people are saying like oh my god look at how cinematic this game is and the, the transition between cinematics and real gameplay that's happening here and all that, which is true to some degree, right? But And then comparing it to Baldur's Gate where it's a very, like, kind of boring-looking game uh, on first blush, you know, it's like you, there's not a lot of movement happening most of the time. Uh, yeah. But then on the Baldur's Gate side, the argument was kind of degrading the fact that Spider-Man 2 in that instance isn't necessarily letting you play the game. It's very cinematic. It's like you're playing a, it's like a movie or whatever, and that that fucking argument or whatever. Um, okay. And yeah. And I mean, I, I don't know why we're arguing about this at all. Okay. Both games are very good. <laughs> I don't well, know why you know, people get so tribal about this stuff, about their fandom of games. You well, know? I, honestly, it's the PlayStation fanboys. They're acting like Xbox fanboys uh, back in the day. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really weird that, I saw the arguments and I I purposely kept my mouth closed because in my opinion, right? Mm-hmm. Either side doesn't play video games. Now, you can have an objective opinion on it. And my objective opinion is like I haven't played Baldur's Gate and I, I actually have it. I haven't played it yet because I'm backlogged yeah. and everything of that nature. Yeah. Um, but I don't mind the gameplay because I like tabletop games. I mean, you introduced me to tabletop games and everything like that, and I just, I love them. So I understand yeah. the nuance behind them. And when I see what's going on with Baldur's Gate, I was like, this is just, this is a game for me, or whatever the case may be. Um, and I don't think people understand that. And that's okay. Uh, like someone said, like one of my friends said, he said, I don't, I don't like table or turn-based games, but that doesn't mean I can't appreciate the game. Right. And I, and I, and I feel like that should be the same way on both sides of this, on the spectrum. Like you cannot like action games because Spider-Man is an action game. It's not, I don't, I think it's disingenuous to call it a cinematic game. I agree. Um, but for people, even on that side of the spectrum, right? I think Spider-Man is a generous action game. Like you're being like to me, an action game is Devil May Cry, Metal Gear Revengeance, like Bayonetta. Spider-Man. There's a lot of assistance happening in Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. Like people realize, yeah. Yeah, sure. uh, there. Uh, 
that game doesn't hold a candle as far as gameplay wise to those said games. So it's like uh, even e- even in some of the cinematic pieces, like the over top cinematic piece, like oh Spider Man got thrown by Sandman and did he did the fucking slingshot back into the fight? Yeah, okay, right in fucking fought Metal Gear, bro. He blocked it with his sword, threw it in the fucking air. While it was in the air, he jumped on the sword and then from the tip to the fucking foot, sliced it in half. <laughs> what? That's fucking crazy to me. That's actual video game shit. So it's like, you can't compare that shit. You know? Um, and you, if you show somebody that, they'll be like, oh, that's fucking stupid or whatever the fucking... Blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, both sides don't play video games, man. Like, because y'all yeah. are just talking about Persona being game of the year, and I think right. the gameplay in Persona is like, not Large the part. best... Yeah, it, it, and people don't understand what makes Persona great. Like, it's everything around that gameplay that makes it yeah. sparkle, you know? Right. So, um, yeah, that, that's my take. Well, so I, I, my, I my, yeah, so my take here is kind of <laughs> almost like bonking both sides on the head here is, yeah, you know, you're going to sit here like, dude, okay, Baldur's Gate 3, right? The word I think a lot of people use for that game is depth, right? Um, depth of of uh, statistical systems, mechanical mechanical depth, right? Um, and that is true. The physics interactions in the game are very uh, like crazy, crazy stuff for for a game like that, right? Um, it's a very deep game in that sense, but it's not a deep like it's not an action game, right? There's no depth on that side of it, like mobility and movement and stuff like that. But Spider Man is that game right where there is depth to the cinematic experience the game is trying to convey to you right that sequence of that people were showing of of sandman throwing spider-man you're going through the building and you know then you like uh you know slingshot yourself back that is that is there is some gameplay in that sequence where you control spider-man yeah to a degree and the the level of like i almost want to call it like i guess programming depth that that has to be able to transition so seamlessly from cinematic to gameplay to cinematic back to gameplay and it is is insane like that like not a lot of studios can pull that off to the level that they did it's so smooth that people are discounting it for how smooth it is you know it's like so there's it, that that's I'm an sorry, experience that not many games can 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 convey i guess yeah and not to cut you off i'll let you finish like when people see that though, they're not thinking of it how we're they thinking aren't. of it. They're not right. They're just like, oh my god, that was so cool. But you're thinking about it, like how I'm thinking about, it, like, bro, how the fuck did they program this shit <laughs> to just run smoothly? Like, yeah. I'm playing a, I'm, I, I am playing a game. I'm also watching a movie, but I'm playing a game. But I gotta think about everything else that's going on. Like, how do they do that? But yeah, it, it and people aren't thinking about stuff like that. Uh, I'll, I'll let you finish. I got another point, though. But I'll let you finish. Well, they're, they're, I, I, my point ultimately is that they're, they're equally impressive in, in different w- ways, you know, of, of depth and then in just programming talent, right? Um, all the interactions that happen in Baldur's Gate 3 are crazy. Dude, programming the, the like, elemental interactions that happen in that game is fucking nuts with all the numbers and the, the fucking statistical systems and all that shit interacting with that at the same time is fucking insane. Like, I don't think you guys understand how fucking hard that is for a game to do, you know? Um, but it's equally hard what Spider-Man was doing. It's just a different form of of what the game is. It's it's action. It's more kinetic, right? So it's like, uh, maybe you prefer one to the other, and I certainly do in certain cases, but I, like, it's, it's extremely, I don't know, shallow, I guess, to degrade a game based on your tastes, you know? Yes, like, and, and this is where... The fucking Baltergate side lost me. Someone said Spider-Man is the Call of Duty of single player games. And do you know <laughs> what the f- in my brain ugh, how much ugh. I wanted it to just fucking yeah. strangle that person? Because it's like, and I didn't even say anything on Twitter. Because it's like, we do have a Call of Duty of single player games. It's named Assassin's Creed. How can you call Spider Man yeah. the assassin, the the Call of Duty of fucking video games? We have a franchise that literally used to release yearly games, every year to two year games, to the point where they were buggy, you know. And it's like, it's like people really don't play video games. And then to get on onto the side of like Baldur's Gate, right? 
uh, like I said, like I play tabletop games and stuff like that. Um, so it's like I can't. I have yet to appreciate everything that is given to me. But what I've seen so far, and I, I haven't seen much because I don't want to spoil myself. But there was like one part where a dude was stacking like crates and stuff like that mm. or something to get to a certain <laughs> spot. And the developers actually anticipated that happening and had dialogue or something to counter that shit. And it's like, that's what we're talking about with in-depth shit because like, like the same way how we appreciate the programming and everything in the cinematic experience for, for Spider-Man, I appreciate how far in depth that developers were like looking at every option that a player can do in certain situations and that to me is fucking incredible and people don't understand shit like that and it really irritates me because people watch let's plays and they watch youtube and then they decide their opinion based off that never playing the game at all and i just i i don't i i don't know i never call both of gate trash and i never and i played spider-man too and i think it's mid i think it's a mid game it's a really decent game but it's mid you know it's not as good as like the original Spider-Man 2018, or even my favorite, Smiles Morales. Uh, so, I I don't know. That's that's just my take, though. You know. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm I'm with you. I just I don't know. I I don't I don't know what. <laughs> it's just frustrating to watch people have these arguments. This is why Twitter, like, I don't really get on it too much anymore, and I definitely don't interact because you're not having a a real like intelligent argument. These people are just like lobbing almost like rhetoric style talking points at each other. And it's, it's, it's like, it's like you're watching a shitty political debate with about <laughs> video games, you know? And uh, I don't know. It's just frustrating to look at. And then, and then people well, get involved. It's like in Reddit like developers too. start getting involved and you're just like, Oh my God. Yeah, I you agree. Know? It's just, I, I don't know, man. Like even in Reddit where you can have long formats of arguments, I've seen people arguing about it and they have long debates about it in like three or four paragraphs or whatever. And it's just like, you didn't play the game. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. You just well, didn't I, play I, it. Yeah. And it's, it's, I think the other th- par- problem with it is like, like we were saying about both sides of it is like, y'all need to expand your horizons, man. Like, <laughs> like both games have their really like have their strengths, obviously, but like, there are other games out there that might even be better than these to you, you know, that, that came out this year. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't know. It's weird. Like, dude, if Spider-Man two had one game of the year, I would have been disappointed, you know? Um, because I, I'm kind of more in line with you. I think we both came down like the game is good. Like it's really good at times, but, um, is it the best that the industry can give us anymore? I don't think so. Um, I, I started to see the flaws in the web swinging a little bit more with this game. Um, uh, especially, you know, the whole assistance thing that we were talking about, like the game assists the player a lot in, in almost everything you're doing. Uh, and I don't like games that do that. You know, um, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't want to be handheld. I don't want to be railroaded into the way I'm playing, you know, and, and um, it's, I, I much prefer a game that, that kind of gives you a system and lets you figure it out and you're either good at it or you're not, you know, and if you're not, you might not be able to play the game. It's like Sekiro. Like, I love that kind of thing, you know? There's no assistance in Sekiro. (laughs) Like you, 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 you survive based on how well you can parry, you know? And it's like, that's the game, you know? And uh, some people don't like that, but so I don't know. I'm just much more in line with that though. And uh, I think Spider-Man is just the level of it is, is a little frustrating because that Arkham style combat, it's not just the swinging, uh, the combat, there's assistance in the combat too. Cause you know, uh, Spider-Man just they just magnetize the enemies and it, and it makes mm-hmm. more sense in Spider-Man than it did in Batman but um, it's still that same mechanic and it's like it's frustrating because I can like just sit there and mass circle and I will eventually kill everybody you know as long <laughs> as I dodge like it's it's there's not a whole lot of thought going into the way you're playing the game you know yeah and people really don't get that man like they just they don't understand it, man. like I don't even I- need to touch the analog stick dude like I just need to punch in the direction. And eventually, once I get close enough, Spider-Man will jump to the enemy and you're on top of them. You know, it's like, it's, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. So. I, I, I'm I glad a game like Baldur's Gate did win Game of the Year. I think it's it's really cool um, to see different games. Uh, sometimes we don't need all the action and flair. Sometimes we do need the, we need the strategy 
or the the turn by turn games or whatever mm-hmm. the case. Like I it would I think it would have been cool if Fire Emblem won, you know, game of the year or something like that. Not this year, but like, you know, Never any happened. year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but this like, year would have been tough too. But, yeah. But I mean, uh, Fire Emblem that game's going to be high on my list when we talk about games of the year this year. Um like that game was a, honestly, as I've gone through the year, that game has stuck with me more than almost anything else I played. Mm-hmm. Um, which I did not expect that coming into the year. So, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's just this year was a very weird year as far as gaming controversy or gaming topics and everything. Um, I don't know. It kind of exposed a lot of people too. Like a lot of people really just don't play video games, or they really they're spoon fed the games that are popular and they don't really expand outside their horizons. And it's yeah. like, I, I get it because like, there are probably like movies. There are tons of movies that I've probably never seen that are super fucking good. And I have to expand my horizons. Right. But I don't, I don't, the thing, the difference between me and I think like the average movie person, I don't think people get on like Twitter. Maybe they do. Um, cause I'm not on, I'm not in movie Twitter or whatever, but like, I rarely see people get on and be like, you know, <laughs> well guys, you know, fucking Marvel Spider-Man is just a cinematic masterpiece and blah, 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 blah. And compared to, I don't fucking know the Godfather or something like that. Right. And you're just like, yikes, that's a really bad take, bro. Like, but in yeah. video games, it's, it's like allowed, you know, it's, I don't know, man. It's just really weird to me. Um, I don't try to be the, the, the gatekeeper of fucking video games or like movies or anything like that. And I never, I don't watch movies when DJ's talking about movies, I let him go because I know absolutely nothing about movies outside the mainstream Damn. shit that I watch, you know? Um, but when someone recommends me like, a, you know, an indie movie or something like that, I go and watch them. Like, oh, wow. You're right. You know, when video games is different. Like, I feel like if you recommend people like indie games or whatever, or double A games, they want the quality of like fucking Call of Duty or whatever the case. And it's just like, you're not going to get that quality, but I guarantee you, if you get past the graphics or if you get past this, you will love this said game or whatever the case may be. Um, I don't know. I, I think even if you don't like a, a, um, a game genre, just give it a chance, you know, and try it. Like, I don't know. I was like that with like sports games until I tried MLB the show and I was like, oh, wow, this game's actually really fucking good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, uh, but I did play sports games before though. So that's like, even, I can't even use that caveat. Yeah. But it's well, like, dude, like, uh, for me, I have an example where is, uh, this is another game I'm probably going to talk about in a few weeks is Atelier Ryza 3, right? Yeah. Uh, I always viewed the Atelier games like in a very specific tier of JRPG. And I, I always viewed it as like less than a lot of the yep. stuff that I like. And uh, maybe that was true with some of the older entries. But dude, I played Atelier Rise of Three and I'm <laughs> fucking like blown away by how much I loved that game. You know, like I, it has opened a whole new uh, series up to me that I've never really considered because I just had an impression of it without ever playing it, you know, because that's just kind of the way the industry like portrays it to you, you know, is that it's less than, um, but dude, in its own right, it's, it's a robust game. Um, that's doing something that very few games are doing, you know, um, especially in the JRPG space, like the, the, the crafting system of that game is extremely complex and, um, there's really not a lot of games that are doing that uh, in any space in gaming. So um, I just like, I don't know. You just, you got to try stuff. Sometimes you just make assumptions about games. Well, just based on what you see and what other people say. And it's like, you know, it's like, I, I don't know. That's, I think that's ultimately the whole point of this conversation is like, go play games, guys, like play the game yourself, you know, go play Baldur's Gate three and Spider-Man two and see how you feel about both. The thing, the thing about it is, they're not really comparable, you know, in most ways. That's what. Uh, that's what. They're so, so different. Annoying you know? about the whole conversation, man. Yeah. And even people who say like, I don't like turn-based games. I don't know. Just fucking try it, man. Like you may not like it, but you, you may know. like. You may like everything, the role playing around it, and everything of that nature. You know, I don't know. Just fucking try it. And there's bro. different types of turn-based games, man. There's like. 
Baldur's Gate 3 style, right? That's like a CRPG. But then there's like, you know, the old Final Fantasies or like Dragon Quest. You know? Yep, exactly. Uh, or Octopath Traveler. That's turn-based, but that's a little different from the other ones I just mentioned. Or then there's the tactic genre. Those are turn-based. That's a different style of turn-based altogether. You might like one of those and not even know it, you know? Yeah, um, but, but you, since you're looking at like a, a YouTube video and you're like, ugh, I don't, I, I don't find myself playing that. And it's like, yeah. in my opinion... Games like, you know, War Groove or fucking Advance mm. Wars, like, those, those are games different te- from Tactics Ogre. You know? Yeah, those are different. And they look terrible, like, on Let's Plays. But when you're playing it, especially, like, on hard difficulties or whatever the case yeah. may be, like, your brain's constantly they're so moving. It, they're so engaging. And that's what's so disappointing about when people say they don't like certain games. It's like, you. <sighs> Certain games, you just have to engage with it first. Yeah. And then you okay. can say that, you know? Yeah, so you're, you're reminding me of something that happened earlier this year that kind of lines up with this conversation. So I was playing Tactics Ogre Reborn for like a couple months this year, right? I I was looking at my uh, PlayStation Wrapped uh, recap for the year, and that, that was like the third highest hours I'd put into a game. It was like 85 hours or something. Yeah. And um, I played that game a lot, right? And I remember I didn't end up finishing, you know, everything I wanted to do in the game. I, I just got burnt out on it. But I remember going and looking at reviews. I wanted to see what people thought of the game because, um, you know, it's one of my favorite tactics games. And I know I had like a kind of a journey with this game, right, where I didn't really like some parts of it, really. And that's kind yeah. of why I took a huge break from it uh, for a while. But ultimately, I got through a lot of that. And ultimately, it was the it was the same tactics ogre that I had fallen in love with. Right. Um, and I, there was one review from somebody that was talking about the game and they didn't like the game very much. And they kept comparing it to triangle strategy mm. and, and saying that, you know, everything that triangle strategy did, like it's just, it did everything this game does so much better. And I, and to your point about differences right within a genre is, is like, I was so frustrating listening to that review because that guy is pretty popular and he has a really large following. And there's a lot of people in the comments who are like, oh, man, I guess I'm going to pass on this game, you know, or whatever. And it's like like almost influencing people in the wrong way because of the way he's describing the game and making comparisons in the game. Like it felt like a really, like really lazy analysis because he kept bringing up triangle strategy and like things he liked in triangle strategy that aren't in tactics. So great. And I'm like, I want I was like, I wanted to yell at my screen like, dude these are different tactics games. Like they are, they look similar, but they play so fucking differently. Like it hurts me that you are making this comparison. Like they're not the same fucking game at all. Like triangle strategy is way closer to like final fantasy tactics and, and fire emblem than it like is tactics ogre tactics ogres in a completely different space, you know, to me. Um, and, like clearly you like that style better than what tactics ogre is offering, but that doesn't mean tactics ogre is bad because of what it's doing. It's just a different game, you know, and you don't like that. You happen to not like that, but it's like, it's just really frustrating because it's making people think that like these games are similar when they're not really at all. Um, You know, tactics ogre is a grinding like tactics game. It is grindy as fuck. You are going to fight hundreds of fucking battles in tactics ogre, bro. And they are slower battles too. Like we're like, they're not going to be over in five minutes. Like they're probably going to take you 15 to 20 minutes to beat, you know? Um, whereas triangle strategy is a much faster game. It has a lot less battles. And at the same time too, there's no grinding in, in triangle strategy. Like it's, it's, you don't really grind in that way. Like you can do a minimal amount of it, but at a certain point, there's so much diminishing returns to it. There's no point in doing it anymore. Whereas tactics ogre dude there's a dungeon in the game that is literally 115 fucking floors uh, and there's a battle for each floor like and that's just a post-game dungeon forget about the rest of the game you know um so i'm like this comparison he was making was just so fucking frustrating and it's like even within a genre there's just those little intricacies that people don't like they don't even think about man like you'll you'll play triangle strategy right and then you'll see tactics ogre and then you go read these reviews and everybody's comparing the two games and it's like you know, it, it kind of turns you off from playing the game. And it's like, that fucking sucks. Like, that sucks. Because Tactics Ogre is its own thing, you know? And it and it, it's doing something different. And it maybe it might not be to your taste, but it, you didn't even try it, you know? It's like, people I influence wish... you into not trying it. <laughs> it's yeah, like, no, I, I wish I could remember the game that really went that way with me, too, and someone was comparing it. And it's probably on the tip of my tongue, I'm just tired. But, like, I was like that as well with the certain games, how you feel. So I know exactly how you feel when people yeah. are talking about, oh, 
Scarlet fucking Nexus. Mm, yeah. Scarlet yeah. Nexus is the greatest example of that as well, where it has the anime aesthetic and everything of that nature, and it has the three party system, but it's it's trying to be a JRPG, but it's actually an action game in disguise. Which is really weird how they how they marketed that game. I don't, and I understand why they did it the way they did it. Um, but even then, people were like, "Oh, it's not. It's Code Vein." And like, I heard a reviewer say that, and he's like, "Oh, it's 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 kind of trying to be like Code Vein, but not." Yeah. And I don't know, and I'm like, "How are y'all getting Code Vein from this?" Yeah. Did, I, did we play the same game? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, yeah. and I, 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 just, I totally understand because I, <laughs> I posted gameplay of the game, and they're like, "This is almost akin to like Kingdom Hearts or Devil May Cry," and I'm mm-hmm. like, "Yes, yes, you're getting it." It's. Mm-hmm. I thought this was like Code Vein. That's what everybody else said. So you didn't play the game because everybody else told you it was like said game. Well, bro, Neo's like that too. I get so mad about Neo. Oh my, like bro, Neo, great... Neo is so criminally oh underserved in this regard. The amount of people comparing it to Dark Souls like makes me want to murder myself. Bro. I'm, I'm like, it's nothing it, like I, it. Nothing I, like. And you know what really fucks you up? That fucks yeah. me up about Neo. I got that game so wrong. And you know what really fucks me up about that game? I mm-hmm. went into it Neo One in particular. Yeah. Um. I didn't give it a chance because I went into it thinking it was a Souls game. Yeah. And I tried to play it like a Souls game and I fucking hated it. And then when I realized Neo 2 that this is actually a fucking action game, yeah. almost an action RPG game, an ARPG game yeah. mixed with the action game, I was like, this game's fucking incredible. Holy fucking shit. Mm-hmm. This is nothing like Souls. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Like it, it has, just has like, some it has some pieces that are like yeah, you know, it has like some like soulsy stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah, shrines and yeah. shit like that. But like yeah, that's a really good example. Like that kind of blended the souls born and like, you know, just straight action though. And I, I yeah, that game to me its greatest downfall was the souls comparison. And I constantly fucking hear reviewers say that shit yeah, it's man. so annoying oh bro. yeah for that game yeah no neo 2 frustrated me a lot because i love neo 1 i think neo 1 is like like when it came out it was a 10 for me right i the fucking <laughs> yeah. love that game and then neo 2 comes out and it's somehow better <laughs> and i'm like i'm like wait a second wait wait so neo 1's a 10 but what is neo 2 then <laughs> it's like i guess it's also a 10 but it's like it's better than neo 1 it's like i don't know how they did that but then Hearing reviewers talk about Neo 2, I'm like, I'm like, bro, people just need to play this game, dude. They just need to play it and they'll understand. Like, and nobody played it because everybody's talking about it like it's a Souls game. And I'm like, oh, yeah, bro, dude, that, it's it, not. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. It's you have to play the games because I I was almost a victim of that. I heard everybody until I met you. I swear to God, I heard everybody say, "Oh, it's just a, it's a shittier, it's an yeah. off-brand, you know, Dark Souls game." <sighs> And then you was like, no, man, play the fucking game. Just play it. And I played it, and I was like, oh, my God, what have I done? It's so the game intricate, dude. Yeah, like, like, I I don't know. Like, I don't know Souls that deeply, but, like, like Neo it, is a super technical game. Like, it's like, super different. It's an action game, bro. Yeah. That's why I love it, it is. so much, bro. Yes, I know. It, it, it really is. It really is. Like, it, it really is at that level. Like, uh, the, 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 the level of intricacy in the combos that you can do the, yes. the, the skill ceiling there is so astronomically high it's like unfathomable if you will go watch high level neo gameplay bro you won't even know what people are doing like you'll, you you literally won't be able to keep up like you won't understand what is even happening on the fucking screen these people are so good like the stance swapping the weapon swapping like it's psychotic the shit you can and, do and, like, and they're doing it on purpose too for extra damage because yes. the rpg mechanic yes. behind it it's not you know, random. Like they know why they're doing these things. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, it's it's fucking nutty, man. Yeah, it's not. It is not comparable to like 
and when you're, when you're talking about combos and stuff like that, people may think like, oh, well, it's like Devil May Cry or it's mm-hmm. like, you know, Bayonetta. And it's like, mm-hmm. no, they're doing this to maximize damage output because yeah. there's some kind of line. It's in not there just says, for fun. Yeah, it's yeah, not just when to you see how high your this, combo count can go. No. Yeah, when you cancel this, you do this, and you get this, and your key gets this, and you get yeah. and you get 2% you get more damage than this. buff that yeah. like raises your damage, you know? It's like, it, dude. Yeah, it's wild. And and every weapon, and there's, there's literally like eight or nine weapon types in the game. Every weapon has that level of intricacy. Like, we're talking like, like this is like if Monster Hunter was like a fucking DMC game. You know, it's like, it's it's nutty how deep it Neo goes. Like, it's it's crazy. Yeah, that, that's um, why I kind of compared it to the ARPG. It's almost like, it's like an action Diablo game, almost. Yeah. Like, when I play that game, that's how I feel. Yes, it's much uh, more of a Diablo game to me than it is a Dark Souls game. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. And so. that, and that's why... Yeah, you know what? I, I think it is a a Diablo game. I mean, you, you, you load into someone else's campaign, and you play with their plane. But it's not, a, it's not an actual, like... It's a multiplayer game, like oh, how Diablo 2 was. Like... Yeah. Yeah, and it's like the loot, and it's like a loot pinata game, you know. Exactly. Um, but way harder than <laughs> than like Diablo is, you know. It's like exactly. It's fucking, uh, you know, I I don't know how to. It's such a unique game. It's it's so criminal. It's so criminal. <laughs> yeah, like man. Neo, the Neo games are so unique. They like, they really are special. Like in in a in a way I can't I can't explain. Like it's really hard to explain. Like I, it's just I don't know. Yeah, no, you're you're right, and I think. And this is why, like, people call me old gamer and everything like that and everything. And it's just like, I don't know, man. I feel like in our era, like, we weren't spoon-fed content. So yeah. you literally had to go to the store, look at a case, and then just fucking buy it. <laughs> buy it and whim. hope it was good. On a whim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Dude, I feel like. You definitely, we all bought games based off box art and what was on the back of the box. Like <laughs> the, the, the screenshots that were on the back of the box. Like we all did that because that's all we could do. Like. And I feel like that's probably the best gaming experience because I experienced so many games based off that. And then like, don't let my parents buy me random games. Like they'll buy me a random game. Not sometimes I like it. And then sometimes I'm like, oh my God. This game is fucking awesome, or whatever the case may be. And I I don't know, man. We just we can't get that back now because of the content drip that people get fed. Like if you like action games, like the the algorithms in Steam or whatever the fuck are only gonna feed you action mm-hmm. games, you know? Um, or whatever. So you're not gonna broaden your horizons and anything like that. I remember I bought Fire Emblem. Oh, this is a great example of like Super Smash Brothers, right? I never heard of Marth and Rory oh, yeah. until Super Smash Brothers Melee. And Damn. then I went back and I played the fucking Fire Emblem games thinking they were action games because I was like, oh my God, Martha and Rory are just so fucking cool. Like these characters are so fucking cool. And I went back and I was like, this is a strategy game. And I just got fucking hooked because like the, <laughs> the games are so good. Well, I remember because so I had the same experience, right? I didn't know Martha and Roy either. And then we got our first Fire Emblem game on the GBA. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Uh, it was the one with Roy's dad as the main character, which was Fire Emblem 7, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember playing that game, and I'm like, wait a second, is this Roy? Like, who is this guy? <laughs> he Ellen looks Wood? just like Roy. Who yeah. the fuck is this guy? He looks just like Roy. Like, he looks exactly like Roy. And then it come to find out, like, I'm playing the game, and I beat the game. And then, and then uh, you know, at the end of the game, I think I think he has kids and Roy pops up in like the epilogue and you're like, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> it is it, like he is related and it's like, oh, shit. You know, so I don't know. It's like you can't replicate those experiences anymore. I feel like it's just we know too much going in. Yeah, games, man. yeah, you know? exactly. I don't know. I, I feel like. Like when I had this whole era of me, you remember it was like an era maybe it was this year or last year when I just went to the Steam library and I was just downloading random shit. I even downloaded like an <laughs> oh, yeah, action yeah. porn game by mistake. <laughs> like, and I, and I, cause I just, I was like, I'm going to download it. It's a character action game. I'm going to fucking download and play it or whatever. And I don't know, like to me, that was like me going inside of a fucking GameStop and just down and just buying a random fucking game for this one. So, yeah. you know, I'm actually um, thinking about doing that right now, dude. Like, there's a game that came out on Steam. Uh, hold on, let me pull my wish list up. It's on here. Uh, is a game called Against the Storm. It just came out um, on December 8th, 
and it's a uh, it's twenty dollars right now. They have it thirty five percent off during its first two weeks of launch, and uh, the the reviews right now ninety six percent of the sixteen thousand two hundred ninety six user reviews for this game are positive. That is insane on Steam. Like you you guys have no clue. Like that is not possible, bro. Like games <laughs> don't do that on Steam anymore. And it's like this is like just some random city builder. But dude, it looks fucking awesome. And I, I I'm I've been like teasing myself getting it maybe getting into the city builder genre because um the uh studio that made Grim Dawn, Crate Entertainment, they made a city builder last year called Fr- Farthest Frontier, and I've been kind of eyeballing these games because of that um because you know eventually i'm probably gonna buy that game and play it but um i'm seeing this one and and dude this looks so fucking good it kind of looks like warcraft 3 in a city builder form and i'm like fuck yeah sign me up man so i'm I, like when i'm done with sorrow ocean i'm actually thinking of picking this up and just fucking around with it you know yeah you, um, you, you know what since i got my switch back i think i'm actually because i really want to try the harvest games or just like harvest type games because i'm like why do you People play it and they're just like so at peace with themselves or whatever. So I'm gonna yeah. get Har- I'm I have Harvest Stella and I'm gonna play it because I I just okay. wanna, we both were, blend- we're talking about it, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Just play games, y'all. That's all I really want y'all to do. And and go into the I I challenge certain people to just go into the storefronts of these games. Don't even look at the gameplay. Just look at the box art and be like, I'm buying it just off the box, off the cover art they have or whatever the case may be. Or the little previews they may give you, and just try it, like, cause you never know, man. You never know yep. if you're gonna, uh, you know, you you may like this game or not like this game or whatever the case may be. So I don't know. I used to. I think this is the, also a disadvantage of like losing rental storefronts and stuff like that because mm. I used to go inside rental stores and just fucking five rent bucks games. Yep, five bucks you get a game for three days. It's perfect. Yep, I played so many games that way that I would have never tried exactly you know um but uh yeah so uh, it's actually kind of so this conversation kind of leads into our next question from uh dat dude um here so this was the question he asked that we never uh we never answered on the show so uh his question so do you guys ever look at your backlog of games with regret why do you personally think you buy games and not don't immediately jump into them uh which at which ends up adding to the backlog log uh i know for me I don't want to say I didn't like a game that I bought, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I feel that. Um, so so sometimes I'm super reluctant to go into my backlog, or maybe yeah. maybe I tried the game and it didn't click with me first, and I'm scared to try it again because I wasted my try and trying to click with it again, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Um, my greatest example of this, and y'all going to hate me for this, was Nier Automata. That game did not click with me at first. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, I actually still haven't finished it, but it's like I had to give the game a chance to get to let the story flesh out and everything of that nature um, because I wasn't really familiar with his, style, his way of storytelling. Um, like, I know he did the Drakengard series and everything of that nature, uh, Yoko Taro. Um, so it, 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 it was just a very jarring game for me. Um, <clears throat> uh but like I have near replicate in my in my backlog as well, and I'm just like, am I really going to enjoy? It? Am I have to play this four or five times? But I think the greatest example, also going against that, is like Xenoblade Chronicles. I went back and I played all those games, and that's one of my favorite JRPG series of all time. And it's just like I gave it a chance, though. So I know for me though, it's just a fear of not liking because there are some games in my backlog that I just don't like, and I'm like, they're there yeah. now, and I'm going to keep them, but. I, I don't want to, I, I hate that feeling where I play the game and I, I'm I'm trying to genuinely give it a chance and I just don't fucking like it, you know? Yeah. And it's like, well, there's a reason why you're in my backlog because I just don't fucking like mm-hmm. it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, uh, this, this, is a lot, this is a really deep topic for me, actually. And and so I was looking at my PlayStation wrapped, right? Um, and I sent, I sent you and DJ like my statistics and stuff for the year. So I played I think I played about 800 hours or something this year on PlayStation, Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, which is usually around what I average is somewhere between eight and like 1200 hours. Usually most years, depending on how, how much I'm playing on PlayStation versus other platforms. And, um, but in those 800 hours, I've only played 10 games this year on PlayStation, which is, which is crazy, right? You would think 
you would think with that number it would be a lot higher like i would have played like i don't know 30 games or something but no this is the thing like you like if you look at my stats like you guys know this i talk about this every week i'm playing genshin i'm playing hawkeye right genshin is half of the 400 hours that i've played this year which is psychotic so i have multiple problems right number one is i always like to have an ongoing game of some sort to play and that has turned into um honkai and genshin the last like three years basically and i've been on and off with these games now for periods of time and uh, they eat up a lot of time and you don't realize it because you're doing it little by little right you're doing an hour a night maybe two hours depending on the evening um but that adds up over a 365 day year (laughs) you know uh and suddenly you've put in 400 hours into a game into the into this game where it's like you could have played like fucking 20 games in that time frame and beaten it probably Um, so that's issue number one for me is just, I have a lot of trouble. I like, I like having something ongoing that I'm kind of building, you know, I I like, I like MMOs. I've, I've always like, like these kind of games where you, you kind of have progress very slowly in them. Um, and, and, uh, Hoyoverse games just hit me in that way. So that's number one. I put a lot of time into those and I, I need to probably pull that back, um, Mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, and number, number two though, is, uh, there's just too many games, dude. Like, like this year in particular, you, you're talking about looking at the backlog with regret, G- dude, don't even talk to me about it. There's games I haven't bought that I mentally have in my backlog, like, uh, you know, star Wars, Jedi survivor, uh, fucking Baldur's gate three, uh, Starfield, uh, fucking cyberpunk phantom Liberty, you know, like I haven't played any of these. Oh, fucking, uh, f- one that I have bought that's been sitting here for six months, Zelda tears of the kingdom literally haven't even put it in my switch since i bought it (laughs) it's like it's like bro like i just there's so many games man like there's too much to play and i don't play enough to keep up anymore like i i can't i'm just too busy of a person you know it's like this is what happens when you're an adult uh with a full-time job you gotta you know you got a wife that's another good point you got a house it's like you have limited game time and then the other issue for me is Uh, compounding this is you know friends like i have a lot of friends and we hang out pretty often you know it's like whether it's playing magic with my magic group or playing league or apex or whatever multiplayer game we're playing with you guys in discord like um i probably put more time there than i'm putting anywhere else um that 800 hours on playstation i would say i'm equaling that with the multiplayer gaming maybe even doubling close to doubling that depending on the year you know it's like um i'm putting a lot of time into the multiplayer stuff and i know you are too obviously because you're there with me most of the time it's like and i don't want to give that up so (laughs) yeah um, it's a a really good multiplayer game for me i know a lot of people play multiplayer games now for like you know just to be the best or whatever but for me it's more it's still social which kind of left multiplayer games that's a whole nother topic um yeah. but yeah I, I play it to play with y'all like i don't even play league solo anymore i just play it to play with y'all if right. i'm not playing if y'all not playing or anything like that i'm playing a single player game and i kind of like that that balance i'm the same way yeah it's kind of how i approach it now and sometimes we're on every night for periods of time you know and that, that'll go like a month or two months even and it's like i don't really play anything else during that time when that when that's going on you know mm-hmm. um so that's huge chunks of the year where like I'm not really playing single player games. So that's why I'm playing so little sometimes. And it's, it's um, so yeah, do I look at it with regret? Definitely. Um, but at the same time, I enjoy the games I play. I'm, I'm like what Montreal though. I'm really stubborn when it comes to playing a game. So like star ocean is a good example, right? Um, and, and near is another good example, right? I didn't actually play near automata uh, for like six months. The year it came out, even though I was super excited about it, everybody raving about this game. I just couldn't bring myself to play it for some reason. That year was really packed too. That was 2017. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I just, you know, I've been distracted with other games. There was other stuff in front of it that I was playing. So when I got to Nier Automata though, I played it for like a month straight and I didn't play anything else. I don't think I interacted with anyone else. Like I didn't get on multiplayer. I wasn't playing anything ongoing at the time. Like I was obsessed with this fucking game. Like that's a special experience right when you have a game like that that kind of captures you in that way in that way and most games don't do that (laughs) um and that's so that's what happens with a game like star ocean right for instance where i'm really stubborn so when i start a game i want to finish it (laughs) before i move on to the next game you know so this is why this also happens to me where i will 
I will play a game like Star Ocean came out on November 1st, right? And it's a month and a half later. I should have been done with this game. This game's not that long. It's like 40 hours, right? It shouldn't take that long to beat this. But it's like I've been stuck on this game, though, because there's periods of the game that aren't that fun, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, where it's like the game, the story kind of, you know, kind of gets a little boring. They're sending you on fetch quests. You're just kind of going from place to place. And it's like you're kind of going through the motions in the game a little bit. And um, it takes a while for the game to pick back up. And when you hit those points, like it kind of becomes a mental block where it's like, I don't really want to play the game that much, but I also don't want to put the game down because the second I move on to something else, I'm never coming back to this. You know, like I just know that's how it's going to happen. So it becomes a mental block where I don't end up playing anything because I don't really want to play the game I'm playing, but I also don't want to move on to something else. So that's when I like jump into the multiplayer stuff really heavily um, is when that happens. Um, And that kind of happened with star ocean and I've had to push through some of those periods a couple times now. And, um, I have, um, and I'm close to the end of the game. So this is the issue with games that are like good, but not great where, yeah. you know, they, they kind of lose you a little bit sometimes. And it's like, you're not like fully enraptured in them, but I'm just stubborn enough where I'm, I'm really unwilling to throw a game to the side and just abandon it, you know? Um, so I need to do that more, I guess. Star Ocean's not probably not the right game for me to do that with because I do like this game and I want to finish it. But um, stuff that's less fun, for instance, like I guess like I'll I'll bring up like Borderlands Three. I should have dropped that game because I fucking hated that game. <laughs> you know, like I beat the game though, like because I'm I'm a completionist. Like I always do this stuff. Um, but I, I should, probably shouldn't have beaten that game because I wasn't it wasn't fun. Like I didn't really enjoy it very much. So yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a combination of factors. I think the other thing is the podcast too. Like when you come on onto the show and talk about a game, you kind of want to have a comprehensive understanding of it. Like you don't want to come in here and have played a third of a game and be like, oh, this game fucking blows. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like you haven't really experienced the whole thing. Yeah. Um, I, that's not a requirement to talk about a game, by the way. I'm not saying you have to complete it. But for me personally, I feel more comfortable talking about stuff that I've put, you know, that I've ba- at least done the main story in. So um that's kind of how i operate but but yeah so a lot of reasons there but um you know it's a very complicated topic the backlog it's a fascinating thing um but uh you'll never you'll never you'll never get ahead of it it's it's never gonna happen there was a brief period in the ps4 generation where i was actually caught up you know or at least i felt like i was there was like nothing there and then uh this was like 2015 i think which was like really early in the the generation um because there was a couple years where there was really nothing good to play so i was just playing backlog stuff stuff for a while and i kind of caught up and then you know and then uh phantom pain comes out and then uh you know you've got witcher coming out that year uh even like fallout 4 and it's just like these games start piling up and then um i get to like 2018 and there's still games in my backlog now that are like 2015 (laughs) games like phantom pain is still in my backlog I've never played it to completion. Like I played like a few hours of it and that's it. Um, but then uh, Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption 2 is sitting there. You know, that's been there since it came out. It's like, and that's a, that's a huge game, but it's like, it's like, bro, like where do I fit a game like that in? You know, it's like, that's going to take me three months to beat probably, you know, like realistically. Um, and that is a huge amount of time to dedicate to a game. So, um Yeah backlog's tough i always i'm constantly thinking about it it's it's something i'm obsessed with which i probably shouldn't be but um that's just who i am so all right uh Montreal, anything else you want to say on that one uh nope, that's it for me all right last question this was from uh sage now that the year is coming to an end do you think this is the best year in gaming based on content only no <laughs> yeah, I don't I mean I don't think so either. I don't think for, it's the best year in game. It's a good year. It's not the yeah. best year. It's not the best year. Well, it's like like speaking of my point, right? Like I've got like five games that are supposedly really great this year that are in my backlog right now that I haven't even touched. It's like I don't know. I'm not even that compelled to play them either. You know, it's like yeah. but can I really say this is one of the best years ever for myself? Like yeah. no. For me personally, no. This uh, I I feel the exact same way. A lot of great games did come out this year, but if you ask me, like my games of the year, I honestly can't remember a lot of the games I played this year. I, I will literally have to go through my documents to see, yeah, um, what I played this year, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. there there weren't any really good, like there weren't any standouts, you know. Like twenty seventeen, I still remember what I played in twenty seventeen or it was twenty eighteen. 
I still remember what I played in those years. Um, yeah, for this year though, it was a really good game for uh release for for release good games. Um, but also a lot of stuff happened to me personally this year that just like deterred me from like video games Mm -hmm. or maybe not maybe that contributed to why i can't remember any good video games because a lot of stuff did happen to me this year good and bad so it's like um yeah for me personally no i i could but if someone was to debate it i or bring it up in a debate i wouldn't debate them because i can definitely see how this is somebody's like best year especially for newer gamers like and when i say newer games i'm like 25 and younger Especially for them, I can see how dude, this if you're is like well. ten, dude. Like, and and this is like really where you're starting to like form your game taste. This year must have been insane. Yeah, you know, exactly. For you. Exactly. Like, like this is gonna be a lot of people's favorite year in video games, definitely. Yeah. Uh, if you're like 15, 16, you can kind of dabble in all games. You're in that transitional period from like you know more kitty games to more mm-hmm. teen to mature games. Like, yeah, this year is fucking crazy for you. Um. Yep. Yeah, 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 and for me, I'm I'm kind of in a similar boat. It's just like I, I don't know, like when I think about best years of games, like I think of them more in periods rather than singular years. And yeah, yeah, I just think it's going to be very difficult for any single year to beat the like 1999 through like 2006 period for me. Like that's like peak gaming in my life. <laughs> I feel like I just played so many games in that period of time um that it's like mind-boggling like i I, and and well i'm talking different types of games too i mean i'm talking shooters strategy games you know uh tactical games turn-based art jrpgs just like action jrpgs all all sorts of fucking games puzzle games fucking what like whatever the fuck man like online multiplayer games mmos like i was playing everything at that point in time you know and it's like obviously i was a kid so i had the time to do it um but it's I think those are just like golden years, you know, where you're, you're like, you, you kind of got to absorb everything. And, and it's, it's so hard to do that now. Like, I, like I'm, I'm going to pontificate about this year, probably three years from now, because I, it'll take me that long to get to all the games that came out. You know, it's like, that's just the way it's going to end up being. So I can't like definitively say this year is not it or it, you know, it's like, it's, I didn't even play half the games that came out, <laughs> you know, like the, the super um, uh, high profile ones. So. So yeah, um, all right, Macho. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we go today? Uh, no, that's it. All right, I feel like we had a nice, uh, nice meaty show today. Um, all right, everybody. If you like the episode, please like the show, review the show, and subscribe to the show on whatever feed you're listening to it on. And please share it with your friends. If you'd like to interact with us on Twitter, you can do so at I trap for the Hokage for Montreal. That is the number four, not the word. I'm at Thunder Zero One, and the show is at the Players Take. If you'd like to send us a question, you can do so on Twitter, or you can send us an email to the players take zero one at gmail.com. And thank you guys, uh, Sage and that dude for sending us questions. Really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, that's going to be it for us guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we will see you next week. Peace.